Hi and welcome back. Uh, if you're new to the channel, my name is Vince uh, and thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome. Uh, so in this video, I'm going to cover um, the latest newsletter that David Sinclair has put out, where he covers 14 tips that he would give to a friend who had asked him um, how to prepare for COVID-19. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, John Durso for contacting me uh, and highlighting one particular part of the newsletter where, um, with reference to NAD, where there seemed to be some um, cause for concern. So look at the presentation. I'll highlight the question halfway through and I'd like your comments on um, what you think the statement means with regard to NAD and mm -hmm. cells and viruses. So he opens his newsletter by saying, I feel I have an obligation as a scientist to cut through the politics and shallow reporting. In this time of uncertainty, it is more important than ever to base our views and decisions on facts and to tell the truth, even if it is hard to hear. He then goes on to make this statement slash disclaimer. He says, let's be clear, I am not an epidemiologist immunologist or MD. I do, however, have an unusual body of experience that I'm trying to bring to bear. My PhD is in genetics and microbiology. I co-founded and am the chief scientific advisor to a company that detects viruses called ArcBio. I can understand, filter and interpret biological and medical literature more than most. I also have a network of doctors CEOs and scientists that I consult with as new data emerges. So the first thing he addresses in the newsletter is NAD and resveratrol. And he says, many people have asked me, does NAD boosting or resveratrol work? And the answer is, we just don't know. Lives are at stake here. He says, with regard to resveratrol in cell cultures, Resveratrol does counteract numerous viruses, including MERS, SARS-1 and HIV. Whether or not it works in a human body to slow viruses hasn't been tested, but it's relatively safe and I continue to take it while I'm safe at home. As for NAD, it's plausible, but again we have no human data. NAD may increase the prevalence of ACE2 that the virus uses to enter cells. But again, we just don't know. So this is where I have a, a question. It looks by, from this statement, that NAD is a bad thing. It looks like NAD opens the door for viruses to enter our cells. That got me to thinking then, I wonder why younger people who naturally have higher levels of NAD tend not to be affected as much with the virus. So let me know what you think in the comments below with regard to NAD and how it may increase the prevalence of ACE2 that the virus uses to enter our cells. So then in the newsletter, he moves on to how to prepare. And he says, my advice to a friend who was to get into the best physical and mental shape over the next few months. First of all, he talks about cardio and he says, maintain cardio fitness. This will increase capillary and red blood cell counts. Lift weights if possible. Uh, unfortunately for me and most people in the world now, gyms are closed. We don't have a home gym, so it's only body weight exercises. He then has a one word sentence that says move. And I'm assuming here he means keep active. Don't lay down on the sofa watching Netflix all day. You know who you are. Don't be low in iron, but then again, don't overdose. Uh, and I think this is good advice for any time of the year. But remember that iron found in meat, poultry and seafood is absorbed more effectively than iron that is found in eggs and plant foods. With regard to medicines, he says, keep taking your medication unless an MD tells you to stop. He mentions fasting and says, eat less often during the day. I skip at least one meal, usually breakfast, and eat sensibly at all other meals. Uh, as for me, I still fast from 8pm until midday. 
Intense exercise, he says, should be avoided. So I see that as including high intensity interval training or HIIT training, as it's more commonly known. So his tips for preparation continue. Um, he says to avoid prolonged or long term fasting. With regard to vitamins, he talks about vitamin D3 and he says vitamin D3 take 2,500 to 5,000 international units of vitamin D3 a day, which doctors say keeps your immune system in good shape. Um, I'm now on 5,000 international units a day and I also take K2. I think it's important to take K2 because that ensures the calcium goes to my bones and teeth and not to my kidneys or my heart. He talks about blood sugar and says keep your blood sugar levels in check by avoiding sugar and processed grains. Focus on plants. Meat should include fish but preferably on the low end of the food chain and this will allow you to avoid any heavy metals. He talks about eating coloured plants, either fresh or snap frozen, and don't overcook them. They contain xenohormetic molecules that activate our cells' defences. So his preparation tips continue. He says include nuts, avocado and olive oil in your diet. Oleic acid from these foods will activate CERT1. And as we know, CERT1 is the defense enzyme. Uh, and this is done in the same way as resveratrol does. Fasting also liberates oleic acid from our fat stores. He says, keep humidity up in the home and maintain a healthy airway and healthy mucus. If your house isn't humidified, get a humidifier for the bedroom. Um, that's obviously if you can afford one. This is an interesting one. He says, turn off breaking news channels read a book or listen to a podcast or make something. I agree with this. There is so much doom and gloom and sensationalizing of absolutely everything on the news at the moment. It can become overwhelming, but eventually it becomes pretty boring. Um, let me know if you're getting a little bit tired of the constant news coverage. He then also says, get sufficient sleep, avoid screens at night, avoid big meals and alcohol, near bedtime. Download FLUX software and this allows you to dim the screen on your um, smartphones or tablets. If you use a phone in bed, wear blue light blocking glasses. Well I hope that was helpful. Um, I'm sure you'll agree there's a lot of conflicting advice out there from unqualified commentators uh, on platforms such as YouTube but also from um, qualified medical professionals from all over the world. There's a lot of people that will tell you what you need to do, but very few people that will tell you what they are actually doing. That's why I like to listen to David Sinclair. Uh, he tends to practice what he preaches. He'll tell you what he does and why he's doing it. Uh, please leave your comments in the section below with regard to the question about NAD and the virus uh, entering the cell. Um, that's it for today. Uh, in these extraordinary times, please, please stay safe. Uh, I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care and bye for now.